Psalm 106. It says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare His praise? Blessed, blessed, it says, blessed. Blessed are they who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Psalm 106 verse 7. It says, remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them. Psalm 106 verse 4. Verse 5, it says, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones. That I may share that I may share in the joy of your nation, continues to say, and join in your inheritance in giving praise. Psalm 106 verse 6, it says, We have sinned even as our fathers did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our fathers were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your mercies, to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea, yet you saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a, through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the four, and from the hand of the enemy he redeemed them. Psalm 106, 11. It says, the waters covered the adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. Psalm 106, verse number 12. Beloved, as I mentioned to you, the book of Psalm is divided into four other five books, just like it is in the books of the law. It is divided into... With the way we have the Genesis, we have the Exodus, we have the Numbers, we have the Leviticus, and then we have the Deuteronomy. This one here is coming to us like the way Deuteronomy is, like the way Leviticus is. And then book 5, we are, we are going to be commencing is going to give us the pattern of the book of Exodus, the book of um, Deuteronomy, sorry. So here we are looking at the journey of the Israelites being told to us by the psalmist in Psalm 106 verse 14. He says that in the desert they gave in, you know, in verse 13 he says, but they forgot what he had done and did not wait for his counsel. In the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wasteland, they put God to test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease. Did not, so he gave them what they asked for and, and sent a wasting disease upon them. Verse 16, in the camp, they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, who were consecrated to the Lord. And the earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. This story is in Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. We can be able to see that story of the way the earth opened up and buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. Verse 19. At Horeb, I am in Psalms 106, verse 19. At Horeb, they made a calf. Hmm. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory for an image of a bull who eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done miracles, who had done great things in Egypt. Miracles in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he will destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. 
Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and they did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with an uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the desert, make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the na and scatter them and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to Baal of Pure and ate sacrifices offered to the lifeless idols. They provoked the God, they provoked the Lord to anger the, by their de wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. When but Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was stayed. Remember the story of Phineas in Numbers chapter 25 verse 8 where Phineas took a sword, took a javelin took a javelin, took a spear, and went and killed the Israelite that was fornicating, that was committing adultery or fornication right in front of the leaders of Israel. By doing this, Phineas intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations. He says in verse 32, By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them, for they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. Psalms 106 verse 34, They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did, their deeds, they were their deeds, they prostituted themselves. Therefore, Psalm 106 verse 40 says, Therefore, the Lord was angry with his people and he abhorred his inheritance he handed them over he handed them over to the nations and their foes ruled over them their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power many times he delivered them but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted away in their sin but he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Psalm 106 verse 47 Save us, O Lord our God. Strain, gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and praise and glory in your, name, in your praise. Psalm 106 verse 47, I will read again. It says, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. And verse 48, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Beloved, that marks the end of book number six, book number four of Psalm, because I said to you that Psalms is written in five books, and uh, we've been able to read through book one, book two, book three, book four today, Psalm 106, and tomorrow we commence the last book, which is the book five. From Psalm 107 to Psalm 150, which is going to be in the pattern of Deuteronomy. We thank God that indeed the Lord has been so good to us. And particular today, we are, you know, coming to a wonderful time of hearing God. Being able to hear the Lord. Being able to know that that's the voice of the shepherd. What a joy. What a blessing. Hallelujah. At this point, why don't you just pray for yourself one more time, knowing very well that you are hearing the very words, the very thoughts of Jesus, the very thoughts of our Lord, the very thoughts of God. From Genesis to Revelation, it's about Him. It's about His Word. It's about His promises. It's about His direction. And it's about us hearing His voice. 
For he's calling us, he's speaking to us, even as we are reading out. It is in the Kenyan time, it is 12.26 in the a.m., in the midnight hour, as we are gathering knowledge. As we prayed and told God we need, water, we need rain, some showers have appeared, and we thank God that today we are transmitting this indoors, because outdoors there's a bit of shower, and we trust God for rain, because it is a time when rain should be raining down on the land, and we are trusting God for rain in this time. Psalm 106. We head out now to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs, hallelujah. The Proverbs is the Proverbs chapter 3 is one of those incredible, incredible wisdom laden books of the Bible. That you can come to Proverbs chapter 3 for further benefits of wisdom. That we can come to Proverbs chapter 3 for a reliable teaching of wisdom that the Lord is going to release to us. Proverbs chapter 3, hallelujah. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Come on, pray. Tell the Lord to open your eyes. Open, open, open. Not just the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes. Let them be open in the name of Jesus. Let your eyes be open. Let them be open. Let your ears be open. Let them be open. Let the Lord be able to speak and that you will hear and that you will see what is saying to the church today. As we hear these words of Jesus, as we hear these words of the Lord, as we hear these promises that are inspired of the Holy Spirit through his servants that have written to us the scriptures. We go to Psalm, Proverbs 3, in Jesus' name, Amen. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your bones and nourishment, nourishment. Uh, it will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Proverbs 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. And do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Verse 13. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her pathways, her ways are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. To those who embrace her, those who lay hold of her will be blessed. Hallelujah. I pray for you today that you will lay hold of wisdom and be blessed in the name of Jesus. It says in verse 19, by wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the deeps were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, verse 21. Preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life to you. Then, an ornament to grace your neck, verse number 23. Then you will... Go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, hallelujah, Sister Ginger. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear, verse 25. Have of, Roma, of Proverbs chapter 3. Have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be their confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. 
Hallelujah. This proverb is one of the most amazing proverbs that is connected from chapter from verse 21 to verse 26. It's one proverb. It says, My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. The sound judgment and discernment, the benefits of it is, one, they will be life for you and an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go out into safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Hallelujah. Just listen to the benefits of wisdom. Listen to the benefits of sound judgment and discernment. That when you preserve sound judgment and discernment, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. So the thing that you need to pray for is not for sleep. It is for judgment and discernment. The moment you have sound judgment and discernment, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Oh Lord, would you just release to us, Lord, discernment, sound discernment, sound judgment and discernment. Lord, give us sound judgment and discernment that, Lord, there will be an ornament to grace our neck, O oh my Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for releasing sound judgment and discernment upon our lives in Jesus' name. So if you find yourself troubled and you're not able to sleep well, this is a scripture that you need to pray. And tell God, Father, I claim sound judgment and discernment tonight in the name of Jesus. Because the benefit of sound judgment and discernment is that when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. You will not be afraid of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence. The Lord will be your confidence. The Lord will be your confidence. And now this is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Proverbs 3 verse 27. It says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Don't say to your neighbor, come back later. I'll give it to you tomorrow when you have it now. Beloved, these two verses give us a very powerful understanding of relationships because Relationships are very key in the plan of God. Relationships are not only for husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, but how we relate with others determines our application of the word of God. It says don't withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. This is not a spiritual thing. This is a doing word. This is something you must do. In your power. If you know what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it, then you sin, says the book of James. You ought to apply yourself to the things God desires you apply. Proverbs 29 and 30. It says this, Proverbs 29 and Proverbs 30. It says, do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Say, do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. You know, beloved, the benefits of wisdom is that you're going to find real life circumstances and situations that will allow, will cause you to apply this word the way it is. Don't plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Proverbs 3.31 Do not envy a violent man. Or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man. But he takes the upright into his confidence. And now this is the confidence. Hallelujah. 
we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him 1 John 5 14 and 15 that when the Lord detests a man a perverse man but he takes the upright into his confidence confidence powerful knowledge that they have the confidence in him we have confidence we have in kiswahili we say who ndio ujasiri ujasiri hallelujah the boldness we have the confidence in the lord the lord takes you into his confidence when you walk in uprightness and the other three verses make one proverb that is proverb chapter 3 verse 33 34 and 35 that is one proverb now listen the lord's curse is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the righteous he mocks proud mockers and gives grace to the humble the wise inherit honor but fools he holds up to shame why would you lift up your right your hands up to the lord and tell him father i receive honor in the name of jesus i receive honor i receive wisdom i receive honor from you lord lord i thank you for the grace to be humble the lord the grace to be humble hallelujah the father i can be counted among the righteous i can stand with boldness and say i malcolm david malcolm david is righteous Many times we disqualify ourselves by saying, I am not righteous, none is righteous. But I'm here to tell you, put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteous one, because he who is in the Lord is a new creation. The word of the Lord tells us clearly and boldly we stand and proclaim and claim the blessing of the righteous because the righteous will inherit the land. The Bible tells us about that he blesses the home of the righteous. Who is the righteous? The one that has been born of the blood, the born of the water, born of the spirit by being born again you have been made righteous by the gift of righteousness in the book of romans chapter 5 verse 17 the word of the lord tells us hallelujah it says that if through the death of one man if through one man death reigned through that one man how much more will those hallelujah showers of rain glory to jesus hallelujah showers of rain hallelujah glory to jesus father let it rain let it rain let it rain let it rain hallelujah let it rain let it rain what a joy beloved that our father has heard our prayers and opened the heavens and rain is happening right now as we speak what a joy blessing hallelujah it's raining in Nairobi here. It's just we are praying and just thanking God today that we've been able to host the other broadcast outdoors. But now today I told the Lord thank you for the outdoor broadcast. Now it's gonna be raining and he had our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. We go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Oh righteous ones, hear the word of the Lord. Our God is good. The rain the spiritual rain is also happening. Receive in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Not just showers but rain. It says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. 
Ecclesiastes 1 to verse 8 denotes of one thought of the preacher. Or talking about seasons and talking about times and talking about a particular time. I shared with my friends earlier today about when you read the scriptures, it's good for you to take heed of the passages so that you do not put just one scripture out and say, this is what the Bible says and it's just one line. You need to look at it, how and what is the context, so that this way you can be able to be a good, uh, a good reader of the Bible. So now we know Ecclesiastes 3 from verse 1 to 8 is one passage. Verse 9 says, What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid upon men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, both the righteous and the wicked, God will bring judgment, both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity and a time for every deed. I also, I also thought, as for men, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Man's fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Man has no advantage over the animal. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place. All come from the dust and to the dust all return. He says, Who knows if the spirit of man rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work because that is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Beloved, I come to encourage you, righteous of the Lord. Do not forsake what the scripture says to you from Romans 5.17. He calls you righteous. That how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. If you are not reigning where you are, begin to reign. Because this is the blessing in Ecclesiastes 3.22. It says that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work. Because this is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Beloved, what a joy to be in the book of 1 Samuel. And particularly chapter 3. We come to the place of knowledge. The Lord's call. Hearing his voice. I know a lot of people have been asking me, How do you hear the voice of God? How do you hear where to go next? How do you hear about your missions. How do you go to the next place and the next place and the next place? Beloved, hearing the voice of God requires a very calm spirit. Requires you to silence every other voice in your life that could be speaking to you. Voices of your cravings, voices of your needs, your desires, your wants, your ambitions, you must silence all those voices in order to hear from God. Let us go and see what happened to Prophet Samuel when he was being called of the Lord. 
That says the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. And there were not many visions. This is in First Samuel chapter one, chapter three, verse one. In those days that Samuel was called, the word of the Lord was rare, was very, very rare. It was not a common thing that you would get. If you read Psalm 74 verse 9, gives us a picture of those times when it says that we, have, we are given no miraculous signs, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. See in Lamentations 2 verse number 9, it says, Her gates have sunk into the ground, their bars have been broken and destroyed, her king and her princess are, ex are exiled among the nations. The law is no more. And our prophets no longer find visions from the Lord. It was in such a time like that. That's in such a time as in Ezekiel 7.26. When he says calamity upon calamity will come. And rumor upon rumor. They will try to get a vision from the prophet. The teaching of the law by the priest will be lost. As the council, as will the council of elders. This was the time that Samuel ministered before the Lord. Where the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. Beloved, we thank God that we have the word of God, we have the visions of God, we have the, the word of God is available to us right now. In Amos chapter 8 verse 11 tells us of a famine that is coming on the land. A famine that will not be of bread and food and water, but a famine of the word of God. We thank God for the journey of 150 days of Psalms because this is not, this is a place of abundance. A place of abundance. Abundance. Great abundance. Amazing abundance of the word of God. It says, in verse 2, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down. One night, the, was lying down in his usual place. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 3. It says, The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Verse 6. Again the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Let me pause here and mention a very critical aspect of hearing God. You may be going to church, you may be having your Bible every day, but you are, the word of God has not yet been revealed to you. And it's in such a meeting like this that you get a revelation that changed your life forever. When you come to hear from the Lord, because the Lord was calling Samuel, but Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 7. I want you to bow your head and tell the Lord, reveal your word unto me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray, Lord, reveal your word to me. Reveal your word to me. I want to hear you clearly. Reveal. Reveal your word. Reveal your word unto me, Lord. Come on, tell the Lord. Tell him in prayer. Tell him in prayer. Tell him in prayer. Yes, reveal your word to me, Lord, that I may hear your voice clearly, that I may be able to know you, that I may be able to hear you. Pray the book of Ephesians 1 and tell the Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
that I may know you better. Give me the spirit of wisdom. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Give me the spirit of wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Oh, my Father, reveal your word to me. Reveal your word to me. Reveal your word to me. Hallelujah. Is there somebody here who would take a fast? And when the people ask you, why are you fasting? You tell them, I need the Lord to reveal his word to me. Many a times we fast because of our needs, because of our physical needs and things we need, we think that God needs to intervene about. Currently in my country, Kenya, there are so many activities that are happening. Some uh, some of those activities that are happening, they are heart-wrenching because they are happening at a time when the church should be giving direction. And we thank God because of giving us help from Zion that as he opened himself up to Samuel, he will open himself up to Kenya. That Kenya on this 12th day of April, 20, this 13th day of April 2022, will open up its ears for the word of the Lord to be revealed upon the heart of the nation. All the nations belong to the Lord, all of them. It's not an issue of religion. All the nations of the earth. You can see what's happening in Ukraine. I saw one video clip from Ukraine. And these very, very old women in one particular town, what was coming out of their mouth was evil words. Horrible, evil words. Very terrible words. I said, God, is this the people? Instead of calling on God, this is what they are saying, this is what they are doing. I said, Lord have mercy on Ukraine. Lord have mercy on Russia. Lord have mercy on Palestine, on Israel, on Syria. You see a change of God in the nation of Russia. All this is very, very um, prophetic if you are watching and reading the news there. The clips from there are horror. Some of them have been generated to send defilement to the hearts of the people who are praying. Do not rejoice over your enemies. If they bomb the Russians, it's not for us to start clapping and celebrating. If they bomb the people of Ukraine, if you are a person who is loving you, uh, Russia is fighting Ukraine, it's not for you to bless the Lord for that. We need to pray for the word of the Lord to be revealed to us. Because when the word of the Lord is revealed, we will hear God. We know what God's intention is in this all issues of the nations. Now verse 9 says, so, you know, verse 8, the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, hallelujah, calling us at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. I come to tell you, somebody watching and listening to me, that indeed there are many times the Lord has been speaking to you, but you are running to the wrong source. For the wrong source to give you revelation. Yet the wrong source cannot give you revelation. You need to hear. You need to say speak Lord. For your servant is listening. You need to hear and say speak Lord. For your servant is listening. The Lord has been coming every single time. And calling you out. And calling out your name. Samuel. 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 Samuel you wake up. You run. You go to the blind priest. You say to the priest. Oh help me. What is it? You called me. Say no. You hear again, Samuel, Samuel, you say, hey, my career is calling. You run to your career. Your career looks at you and says, what is it? He said, ah, you did not call me. Then you go, the career tells you now, when he asks you again, please tell him that you are there. 
The moment you allow your ears to hear from the Lord, you'll be able to say, speak for your servant is listening. Until and unless you tell the Lord, I am attentive, he will not speak to you. God is God by himself. He can be able to just cause you to, cause all of us in the world to follow him. But God's love does not permit him to control us as robots. He's a creator. Can what is created tell to the one who created it? Why do I, why did you make me like this? By no means. And listen to verse 11 and I love this. The Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. At that time, I will carry out every... I will carry out... At that time, it says the Lord, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from the beginning to the end. For I, for I told him I would judge his family forever. Because of the sin he knew about. And his sons made themselves contemptible. And he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli. The guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned by the sacrifice or offering. Then Samuel lay down until morning. And then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli of the vision. Then Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son, Samuel answered, Here I am. What is it that he said to you? Eli asked, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fell, fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Bathsheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word, and Samuel's word came to all Israel. What a powerful, powerful powerful scripture of first samuel chapter 3 that we are able to note something that it is only once that eli called samuel and this was after the lord had called samuel three times samuel was a very obedient young man when god called him he did not know the voice of god yet because in those days the word of God was rare. The priesthood of Eli was a blind priesthood. Unfortunately, we live in times when we, are, we have the Eli priesthood still around. We need the Lord to intervene and grant us his own priesthood upon our lives. That it is for us to know that if you have not been hearing God, there is something blocking your ears. And that's why in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 11 says that I will do something in this land that will mock the ears of those who hear it tingle. God is about to do it in your life. God is about to do it in your life. Hallelujah. God is about to do something that will make those that hear all of it, their ears will tingle. Let's go to the book of John chapter 16. What a beautiful time that the Lord has helped us. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here. He's our teacher. He's teaching us. We are so amazed at his teachings. You know, the Lord would sit with his disciples at night and he would just speak to them and talk to them and speak to them throughout the night. And as we shall see in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took three of them and they went there. And the whole night Jesus was laboring in the place of prayer. And in that night, the, the night where Jesus sweated blood. My goodness. Our Lord sweated blood. Well, that was tough. But let's listen to John chapter 16. It says, All this I have told you, that is the discourse of the vine and the vine dresser and all that. All this I have told you, so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think that he's offering a service to God. 
They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. He says, now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? Verse 6. Because I have said these things, you have filed, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. At this time, I want you to lift up your hand and tell the Lord, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the counselor. Hallelujah. Yes, we see, Lord, that unless you had gone, we would not have had the Holy Spirit to counsel us. My God, counsel us, counsel us. Precious Holy Spirit, bring your counsel upon your children. Bring your counsel upon my life. Bring your counsel upon my career. Bring your counsel upon my family. Bring your counsel upon my business. Bring your counsel upon my children. Bring your counsel upon my nation. Holy Spirit, you are here because the Lord was taken away from us. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you dwell. Thank you that you are here teaching us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are here right now, right now, teaching us. Hallelujah. To an African man, the Spirit of God sometimes will manifest in how he understand the spirit of god you will notice that there will be a man praying and he's standing still and another one will be shaking all around and turning around and falling down and shaking and what and what and the one standing still and praying and the one falling down shaking all of them are in the presence of the lord you should not worry and start asking yourself, when will I fall down when the minister prays for me? How will I know that I am filled with the Holy Spirit? Is it when I start shaking like sister so and so? Is it when I start rolling on the ground? There is need for us to understand that you don't need to roll on the ground, you don't need to jump, you don't need to scream, you don't need to do anything. The Holy Spirit is here. And based on how you apply your knowledge, if you are a very excited person, you may, it may manifest like that in your excitement, your emotions, your ability. You know, sometimes the Holy Spirit may come upon somebody that is very polite and the person will become very bold, very, very bold. And you will not understand what is happening because the counselor has come, he's here. It's not that he'll come later on. You must believe and you must know this, that you must kill the spirit of doubt if at all you want to hear God. You must kill doubt completely. There should be no doubt. You should say, I heard from the Lord. You should clearly say that. Because He is there. He has been sent already. Verse, six, uh, verse 8 says, When He comes, He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men did not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the spirit of this world now stands condemned. I have much to say to you, more than you can even bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will speak only what he hears. John chapter 16, verse number 13. And he will tell you what is yet to come. It says again, here as we go on in John 16, 14. It says he will bring glory to me by talking from you, by taking from you, by taking from you, Hallelujah. He will bring glory to me by taking, from, uh, by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I say the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, 
you will see me. Some of these disciples say to one another, What does he mean in saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and yet in a little while you will see me, because I'm going to my father. They kept asking, What does he mean, a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they had wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, Are you asking one another, what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. I tell you the truth. You will weep and moan while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when the baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. John sixteen twenty three. And now, this is the confidence we have in him. Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Hallelujah! Way! Hallelujah! Glory! Listen, this is what it says. In that day, when? Today, you will not no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And now this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Hey, I am, look, I am there. I am in that day. Ah, my father, I am not asking of anything. Ah, Lizia Robosha, I am not asking for anything. My father, you are all oh, my heavenly father. Give them to me, whatever I have asked in Jesus' name. I don't ask for anything. I ask in confidence. The word of God says me that I ask in confidence. The Lord is speaking to you right now. They hear his voice. Say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. In the midnight hour, wherever you are watching, whatever time you are watching, I want you to know, just like the boy Samuel, it took three times to understand the Lord was calling him. And when the third time came, he said, here I am, Lord. Speak for your servant is listening. Would you just humble yourself and tell the Lord, speak, I am listening. Many a times we are too impatient, running up and down, browsing through window after window, listening to this, looking at this video, that video. On TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, never having time, you know. Very, very interesting here in my country, Kenya. People are going into traffic jams to go and buy fuel. And by the time they get out of that traffic jam, the fuel they have bought is finished. And you just ask yourself, should we really be moving then in this kind of a situation? But the Lord has said that the time is coming. A time is coming. Can you imagine the war that is happening in Ukraine and Russia is entering into its 50th day anytime now. And there's something that God is doing in the nations. We may not be able to understand. We see the nation of India. They are so involved in this matter. One of the things that India did is that when the rest were voting against Russia, India abstained. Hmm. I don't want to talk about those things, current affairs and prophecies. I think I will do a separate video as the Lord allows me. So that we may just continue being focused on what God is saying to us tonight. He says, whatever you ask in my name. In First John 5, 14 and 15. This is a verse I want you to look in every other verse. When you are reading the scripture, look for 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Like in this one of John 16 and verse 23, it says, In that day you will ask me, you will not ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And this is the confidence. So this is the confidence now is connected to this one. Hallelujah. It says in John 16, 24, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. 
Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but I will tell you plainly about my father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. Are you together? That this is something that God is saying you must do for yourself, Sister Emily. You cannot delegate your prayers. You can tell people, please pray for me. And there's something that, uh, you know, uh, here in, uh, in my country, Kenya, when, when somebody, uh, you know, when you're going to church and you greet somebody on your way to church and say, hey, hello, uh, you're going to church. Then they say, oh, na mtuombe, mkifika kanisani, mtuombe. For me, I used to answer somebody and say, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, I will not pray for you. It sounded like it's a rude answer to somebody. But it's the truth. I cannot be able to ask on your behalf. There is the portion of intercession. But there is a place that nobody else can stand apart from you. Nobody else. Unless you yourself ask in the name of the Lord. You will keep going for those meeting after meeting. You know, and I see now on the internet there are all sorts of things. You know, there are some other people who claim. You don't worry. Just send your love offering here. We will pray for you and you will get your answer. And you can see blind Christians doing that. God in his mercy at times causes the answers to come through, but it is not in the scripture. You see this? He says, I'll tell you in that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. John 16 verse 26 is a time for you to wake up, O oh sleeper. If you have been sleeping, wake up. It's time to wake up. It is time for you to put your hand to the work. Because it says in the book of Proverbs 19.24 that the sluggard buries his hand in the dish and would not even bring it back to his mouth. This verse of John 16.26, beloved, it says in that day you will ask in my name. Sister Ginger, whatever it is you want to ask from the Lord, it is you to ask. Ask. Now this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Father, we ask you to send rain on the northern part of Kenya. We ask you for rain in Wajir. Have mercy, Lord, on the blood that has been shed over that land, bringing defilement on the land. Father, let the rain not be in floods. Let it not kill the people. Lord, let the waters fill the valleys and the hills, O oh Lord. Father, may your waters come. We know we have this confidence that you will answer. In Jesus' name, amen. John 16 verse 27 says, No, the Father himself loves you because he has loved me and have believed that I came from God. Verse number 28. It says, Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I came from the Father and he entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you don't even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Beloved, you notice that in verse 29 of John 16 is that the Lord opened their mind for them to understand this truth. And one thing about it is that, you know, when you begin to hear God, the language becomes very plain for you. You don't struggle. You don't struggle to hear God. The language becomes very plain when you are, are listening to him more. Hallelujah. It says in verse 28, I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. That is what Jesus says. Verse 30, now we can see that you know all things and you did not even need to ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Verse 31, you believe at last, Jesus answered. But a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. Now listen to this. In the world, you will have many trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for helping us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. It says, be uh, Ephesians chapter 4, not Ephesians chapter 5 yet. We are on Ephesians 4. It says, as a prisoner of the Lord, for the Lord, I urge you to live a, a life worthy of your calling you have, re you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except he descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up to him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. That you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and continual lust for more. Beloved, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19 is the cry for the body of Christ that we will not in any way lose sensitivity. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord, my Father, have mercy on me in the name of Jesus. Pray, tell the Lord to have mercy on you. Tell him, my Father, help me not to lose all sensitivity. In the name of Jesus, help me to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Come on, pray. Tell the Lord, help me to be sensi sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Help me to hear you, Lord. Help me to be sensitive to your Spirit. Lord, I pray, help me to be sensitive. Help me to be sensitive that I will no longer ask anything. Because in that day, which is today, I will ask in the Father's name. And everything will be granted. So, Father... I pray that you may remove every kind of challenge that may cause me to lose sensitivity. Hey! The Father will not lose sensitivity. That I will not give over to sensuality. Oh God! The Lord will not give over to sensuality, my Father. We will not lose over to sensuality. Oh God, have mercy that I will not lose my sensitivity to your voice. Come on, tell the Lord. You want to hear the Lord more? Pray this prayer. You want to hear the Lord? You want to hear Him clearly? You want to run to Him and not to Eli? This is the prayer. Oh God, arise. Have mercy on me. Oh God, arise. Have mercy on me. I don't want to lose sensitivity. Hallelujah. Have mercy that I will not be given to sensuality. In the name of Jesus, help me, my Father. Help me, my Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
He says, so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. If you see what's happening now in the churches, you can see people losing sensitivity, bringing the world to church. They choose their type of dignity and honor. I told you about the dress, the dress code. I told you about the dress code and, and how what determines your dress code is your knowledge of why clothes. Why clothes? Why, why do you have clothes? Clothes are meant for, sen for, 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 for dignity and honor. That is the purpose of clothes. The same way we understand this in the book of Exodus, when the Lord spoke to Moses and said, make sacred garments for Aaron and his sons, for dignity and for honor. So, you look at yourself in the mirror, my dear brother, my dear sister, ask yourself, are you dressed up for dignity and honor? Sensuality. Losing up to sensuality, giving up yourself to sensuality will cause you to look like the world, smell like the world, be the world, and just be a secret service Christian. People will know you are a Christian only when you say, I am John or I am Peter. But they cannot see the fruit. Let me tell you, the purpose of fruit in our life is not for ourselves. The fruit is not ours. The tree that bears the fruit does not eat the fruit. The mango does not eat the mangoes. I'm telling you that the fruit is for the other people. And it is for the owner of the garden. The order of the farm. He's the one that as the Lord, the vine dresser, wants you to be fruitful for himself. That when the world is looking for patience, they can find Sister Ginger and pick a little bit of patience from there. They can look for some joy in the life of Zoe. They can look for some, for, some, for some peace in the life of Geoffrey. The fruit of the Spirit is for the sake of the vine dresser, is for the sake of the Father. The Father wants to boast with you and say, look at my servant David. Look at how he pleases me by having patience. Even though he's going through very, very many troubles, I have given him peace. The book of John 16.33, in this world you will have many troubles, but be of good cheer, for I overcame the world. That's the word of God. It says here, as we continue, and I want you to mark and highlight Ephesians 4 verse 19, that you will not lose sensitivity. Because when you lose sensitivity, you are given over to sensuality, and you will indulge in every kind of impurity. And with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ this way, verse 20. Sure, surely you've heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You are taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your new old self, which is being corrupted by its sinful, by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your sin, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something with his hands that he, may be, that, uh, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome talk out of your mouth. This is the verse that I wanted you to get. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only which is helpful in building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, just as in Christ God forgave you. Remember that it's only in Christ that we can be able to 
please God. We cannot please God in any other place. Only in Christ. Only in Christ. Because the Lord looks at Christ. When you put on Christ, then you can be able to please Him. Without Christ in your life, you cannot please God. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth has passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful dress for her his, for his husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and, will live, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I received that word. I don't know if you are with me, but I want you to receive that word. That the one who sits on the throne is saying to you today, I am making everything new. Everything new. Everything, not some things. Everything new. Now run with it as you pray. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost. From the spring of the water of life, he who overcomes will inherit the land. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, hmm, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls of the last seven plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and with its brilliance was like the very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, three on the west. The well the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles. Of the Lamb, the angel talked with me, had a measuring rod and a gold of gold to measure the city, its gates, its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with a rod and found it to be twelve thousand stadia. In length as it is wide and high as it is long. He measured its walls and it was 144 cubits thick. By man's measurement, which the angel was using, the wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, carnelian. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, burial. The ninth, topaz. The tenth, chrysophrase. The eleventh, jacinth. And the twelfth, amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each gate was made of a single pearl. And the great street of the city was of pure gold like transparent glass. I do not see a temple in that city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates be ever shut. There will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will enter into it. 
nor anyone who does what is shameful and deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Beloved, I want you to rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. But you could have been watching or you would have scrolled and found this video at this stage and you yourself, you are not sure whether your name is written in the book of life. In the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9, the word of God says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I want you to pray this prayer with me, even as you receive the Lord, if you are not born again. If you are born again, kindly lead somebody in this prayer as the Lord helps you. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart, God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beloved, if you have prayed that prayer, you are now in the greatest family on earth, the family of God. I pray for you now as we also ask God to open our ears and our spiritual eyes to hear Him more, to see Him more in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank You for the transmission on Facebook and YouTube. We thank you, Lord, for the people of God that we have gathered in the Google Meet. We pray, Father, as we continue on in these scriptures and in this journey, as we close book five, big book four, that all the benefits that you have placed in us, that you have enabled us to hear from you, that we will apply in our lives. We pray for the ones that have given their lives to Christ. We thank you, Father, for them that are across the nations. We remember the nation of Kenya. We continue to pray, asking you for well-distributed rain. Not rain that will destroy in floods, but rain that will help the crops and will help the farmers get water. That will help the cattle not to die out of drought. My Father, we pray that you will provide. Father, we know that the government does not even know what to do. It is only you who can intervene. So we pray for the nations, we pray for the different countries, oh Lord, all the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray, thanking you for Russia, for America, for China, for the, all the major nations, Lord, including all the continents that you have given unto us to call on you. Father, we ask of the nations as our inheritance and our possession. Thank you, our Father, even as we continue to call on your name. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord, for helping us in Facebook. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good night, Facebook. Good morning. Shalom.